today I want to talk about something a bit controversial. And I know some people may have something negative to say about this because there is a lot of talk about these controversial issues when it comes to diet and what we should eat. And the controversial discussions center itself always around red meat and just meat in general and fats, okay? A lot of times fats that come from animal products. And I want to address this today and maybe bring some balance and some clarity to this. Now, before I move forward, please make sure that you like this video and you subscribe to my page so that when I send videos out, you can be notified right away. Thank you for that always. Now, when it comes to red meat, there is just a lot of judgment that happens when people are eating meat and red meat gets the worst judgment for whatever reason. And I know that some people are sensitive to eating or other people eating animals. And I totally understand if that is a belief system that is out there. And I don't judge anybody for what they decide to eat or not. Our belief systems are there to be created for ourselves, to create a value system for what we will do in life what behavior patterns we will have, what decisions we'll make. They're not there for us to always use to judge other people for what they do. Our belief systems are our own convictions and they come in different ways and it's okay. But I notice that there's a lot of times this war between the plant community and the animal community. And I'm not sure who is at fault for what, but what I often witness is that a lot of people in the plant community can sometimes down those who are in the animal community. And that's because of the strong conviction a lot of times of, you know, killing animals. And again, I respect everybody's belief and I'm very empathetic and sensitive to it, but it belongs to the person. It doesn't belong to the person in order to use as a road to restriction and judgment and control over what another person decides to do. Now, I'm a health advocate and I do have some biasness and my biases come from me studying research and looking at the scientific proven ways to, for example, reverse chronic disease or diabetes or whatever. And I usually try to stick to it until I can be proven otherwise. And I do a lot of things to try to prove myself wrong, but until it can be proven wrong after proven right, it's just hard for me to go in a different direction because I love science. I don't listen to just opinions and just theories that have no backings or anything. I try to listen to scientific proven methods that have been studied and that have been investigated and you know uh, tested over and over and then experimental proof of people and what works and what don't work and i generally try to use what i understand uh, for the general population or for those who are metabolically unhealthy because i try to reverse chronic disease but this thing about red meat it really startles me a bit. And the reason why is because I know a lot of people who just don't eat red meat because somebody said don't eat red meat. And I get it. You wanted to listen to that person and that's what you want to do. But sometimes they feel like, okay, I think I'm doing myself a justice by doing this, but you don't even know why you're doing it. And one of the things that has come out over and over again is people saying red meat causes diabetes red meat causes disease saturated fat causes heart attacks and heart problems and cholesterol is bad for you and all of this other stuff right and so what i started to think about was just common sense let's forget science let's just talk about common sense and what is the facts what has literally been proven from just things that have happened now Red meat has been decreased by people consuming it since probably the 1970s. Like we're at a place now where less and less people consume red meat. I mean, I know people who eat cookies and ice cream and pancakes and, you know, donuts. And they say, I don't eat red meat. And it's like, okay. 
So I say that to say that even people who are eating unhealthy are not eating red meat, okay? And so there is less consumption of red meat right now than there's ever been. But you wanna know the interesting facts? Disease, chronic disease in general has gone up. Diabetes has gone up. Cancer, gone up. Heart disease, gone up. Kidney disease, gone up. All kind of inflammatory diseases, autoimmune diseases, gone up. So let's not even go to the next level. This don't even take a scientist. It don't take a health expert. It don't take anything to know, is it really red meat that's causing diabetes if less and less people consume red meat? And again, I know just random people who are even around me in my space who say, I don't eat red meat. Red meat is not good for me. And that's fine because I tell people, if you eat something and it's not good for you and you don't feel good eating it, don't eat it. So regardless of why someone is not eating red meat, I don't know, you know, what all of their reasons are. And I won't even judge it. I think some of it is just based off opinions or what somebody else said, or just a theory of thinking that you're making a healthier decision. But I would suggest instead of coming off a of red meat, that you come off the high fructose corn syrup and you come off the inflammatory fake vegetable oils and you come off the processed sugar and the processed foods that you're consuming, you know, from restaurants or from frozen food sections or the carrageenan that's found in a lot of dairy products and, you know, and the high carb diet that just contains way too many refined sugars in the food than red meat. But again, another person's choice and that's totally fine. But what we all need to understand is that red meat could not possibly be causing diabetes. If diabetes have gone up and up and up, even with the trend of low fat diet, the whole entire phenomenon that was set to lower cholesterol, lower your fat, and eat products that strip away the fat. And what do they do? They just add extra sugar because we know that fat actually gives it a better taste. You know, like when you take fat out of something, the taste is probably going to go bad. And so now it's being replaced with sugar alternatives. And so not too sure how smart of an idea it is to lower your cholesterol when cholesterol is there to repair so many different things. I mean, you need cholesterol to reproduce and you need it to allow vitamin D to be utilized in the body because you need enough cholesterol in your skin in order for vitamin D from the sun to actually work and absorb in your body. I mean, Cholesterol also helps to go to the site and repair damage when there's an inflammatory response to the body from something else. Like, for example, putting too much sugar in the body increases inflammation. And yes, a lot of times cholesterol is utilized to go out and to repair the damage that inflammation actually causes. And so, of course, we blame the wrong thing for what's actually happening, but we won't go into all of that. I just want to say that it is quite interesting that we feel like red meat is causing problems when most people don't even eat red meat. Now, I'm not going to say most people. Let me just say this. When a lot of people don't, as a matter of fact, less people eat red meat than 50 years ago. But inflammation and inflammatory diseases are increasing. So can we figure out another culprit behind, you know, chronic disease and diabetes than red meat and even saturated fats? You know, when the whole world, and I'm using this in sarcasm, went on a low fat diet, diabetes actually went way up. It was literally an epidemic. And we are still blaming saturated fats and saying red meat causes this and red meat causes cancer and red meat causes diabetes and red meat causes this and that. And yet you got all these people who not even eat red meat and is still continuing to rise. And so this doesn't have to be deep. I just think that we need to rethink this. Doesn't need to even need to be on a science-based level. Let's just rethink why chronic disease is rising. What are people eating on a day-to-day -day basis 
and let's analyze this what people are mostly eating which is not red meat i mean the carnivore community has to really educate people about eating more meat and there's nothing wrong with that because if you're seeing that all of these chronic diseases are rising yet you got a ton of plant eaters you know there's a lot of people out there who are like i eat plant-based only and that's perfectly fine or i eat you know i'm a vegetarian i'm a vegan i'm this i don't eat red meat i only eat a little bit of this i you know like and it's again totally fine but why should somebody who really cares about your health sit around and just take on what everybody else is doing when it's causing an increased pattern of chronic diseases why wouldn't you finally say listen We've been studying this for a long time. We've been researching this. And what we found is that those in this community that's eating like this are decreasing chronic disease, decreasing autoimmune disease, decreasing anxiety, decreasing depression, decreasing diabetes, decreasing heart problems, decreasing kidney damage and kidney disease. Like why wouldn't they advocate for that? And people get mad about it. But it makes sense to be able to advocate and say, listen, we don't try this and it's still going up. Let's try this because we're seeing so many benefits from this that we want you to just test it out and see if it's going to work. I just wanted to bring this uh, to your attention because there's a lot of war that happens and I want to just bring a balance to it and just say there is nothing wrong with trying to help people to get healthier and to do the things that have been proven to be healthy and it don't make sense even on a basic level to continue doing the same thing and getting the same results and the majority of people we know what they eat we can look around and see we see what the advertisements of it is we see and so we see all the carbs we see the the dessert for breakfast the caramel macchiato you know at a coffee shop and all the extra pumps of sugar and the extra vanilla pump of this and the frappuccino and the the croissant early in the morning and the pancakes with the syrup and the sugary peaches on top and you know this is dessert this is dessert for breakfast and we start off with that and then we move on and we got the potato chips and the snacks and the sandwiches with the bread and then we got a snack here and a snack there and a granola bar here and an energy drink there and then we move on we got the pizza and the spaghetti and all different types of pasta with the garlic bread and the fried chicken and the french fries and the burger and the with the bread and the we see what people eat okay and then you want dessert after that? I forgot to say that we also start with bread when we go to the restaurant and then we eat all that. And then we end up with that dessert menu. Mm. So we know what people are eating. We see it and we need to start dealing with that. And then when you tell people, hey, we need to lower the carbs. Oh no, we need these extra carbs for energy and we need them for this. And as long as your calories are this way, then you know you'll be okay with not understanding that we also have hormones that tell our body how to utilize energy so it cannot be calories in and calories out because the calories that come from simple carbs are going to be utilized in our body a lot differently than the calories that come from protein and healthy fats and so there's a lot that we just need to evaluate and i want to bring attention to it that if we look at the way a lot of people are eating and we see the rise of disease then we have to go in the opposite direction we cannot keep going in the same direction with okay don't eat this okay don't eat red meat don't eat this but you can eat that and you know and diseases still rise. And so I think it's necessary to talk about it and to really shine some light on some of this stuff to allow people to rethink what they need to do with their health and their diet regimen. 
And I always say to pay attention to your body because legitimately, if something just don't feel right to you, then don't eat it. You know, for somebody, they may feel like this food item works really well for me, gives me energy, helps to reduce inflammation and pain in my joints and, you know, help me to burn fat. And then somebody else might say, well, this bloats me and it makes me feel like I have increased inflammation and I got back pain and low energy and can't sleep and got anxiety. You know, pay attention to your body overall. But I just want to say as a whole, in general, we have to pay attention to some of the stuff that's being pushed while yet disease continue to still rise. And we need to start to rethink this. And we also need to stop judging people who have had great, you know, experiences and great benefits and great outcomes and have reversed disease. Like I say, all of these emotional diseases and physical limitations and diseases due to their diet. And just because you have a belief system that convicts you from not eating this particular food, yet somebody else is being healed and having reversal of symptoms and disease. Why would you judge that? I don't understand it. And the same is true vice versa, that if somebody decides that they want to go on this particular diet, and, uh, you know, there may be a bias on one end and you feel like you shouldn't do that. This is going to be harmful to your body, uh, but they're experiencing great rewards from it. Then that's what their experiences are and no need to judge it. All we can do is educate and encourage and inspire and continue to motivate and yes, I do think some people's research is better than others. And some people also have the longevity of result that can triumph over like small little short windows of what the results look like. And I do have a bias when it comes to health and what foods to eat. And again, my bias is based off of research, yet I am still very bio individuality because I believe that there are some separations at some point with all of us, even though we all share some very similar things that happen with our body, there are some very extreme differences at times. So I say this to say, do your research, continue to investigate, continue to watch the science, connect the dots. You don't need to be a genius to do that. You can just be very, very aware. And I push everybody, into awareness, especially awareness of you, your body, your results, your outcomes, and what is happening to you when you put certain disciplines and habits in place and when you eat a certain diet. All right. So I hope that this empowered you to continue to be educated and continue to learn so that you can live extremely healthy and you can have a great prosperous life do not forget to like this video and subscribe to my page and I will continue to get videos out to you that will empower you to live a healthy life. I'll see you next time.